Hey everybody, it's me, Margaret, and I have to confess that I am not a fan of traditional towel toppers, you know, those crocheted things that you see. However, leave it to Sarah Zimmerman to make something that I love. You probably know Sarah as Repeat Crafter Me, and she's one of my favorite crocheters, mainly because what she does is put a modern spin on typical crochet type things. This is comical. It is fun and I absolutely love it so I had to do it. It takes very little yarn so it's great for those scrap projects. It's really good. Now she used a purchased towel. I did not. If you want to use the exact same supplies and materials that she used then just turn me off and go pop over there to her site. I'm going to put a link to it in the description box below so you can get right to it. But if you want to see what you can do with alternative materials, then stay here because that's what I'm talking about today. Now I used these, and this is something that's really making a resurgence right now, cotton tea towels or flower sack towels. And one of the reasons why is because they're probably uh, more ecologically sound in that, first of all, look at them. They're wider than typical kitchen towels and yet they are thinner too than typical kitchen towels which means that they dry faster. They also don't leave lint on dishes and stuff when you are drying things off. But how nice is it to take, you know, 12 of these, throw them in the washer and they're going to dry in no time, unlike a big thick cotton terry. I downloaded this embroidery file from Etsy and I'll put the link in the description box below. But I used that to make my little towel on one of those tea towels. Now you may not have an embroidery machine to use that file, but what if you have a cutting machine like a Silhouette or a Cricut? You could use some heat transfer vinyl and you could make one on there and I will put a free SGV file down in the description box below. Well, a link to it, that is, so that you could download that. Now, you will have to pull it into your software and shrink it to fit the towel width. And while you're there, you can colorize it as well. So you can have fun with that. Now, if you don't have an embroidery machine or you don't have a cutting machine, you can use a free printable, which I'll also link down below. And you can print it on that t shirt transfer paper and you could iron it onto whatever it is. You you're going to do. Like, I think it would probably be best with something smooth like this rather than the loops of a terry towel. But, um, you know, worth a try. Now, in order to get mine this width, which is more like a typical kitchen towel, what I did was do some fancy folding, sort of um, an accordion style, as you can see, like that. And then I pressed it to make the sharp edges after, of course, I did my embroidery. I need to go back and press again, don't I? Now, I'm going to spare you all my failed attempts at how I tried to get that foundation chain right there on top of my towel. But I will tell you my successful attempt involved an awl or ice pick, some people call it, and a nice thick towel. This is an old towel because I ended up, you can see, creating holes as I punch them. <laughs> Let me show you. First, I ran a line of stitching to hold the folds in place, and I didn't have a sharp tapestry needle, so I had to poke holes, two sets of holes for each stitch. The fibers kept closing up, so I kept that all handy so I could repoke when necessary. Then I followed Sarah's video instructions on how to lay down a foundation chain with the tapestry needle. So uh, the video is linked below, by the way, in case you need that reference as well. Now, the number of foundation stitches that I got across the top of mine was different than what Sarah got. She got 18, I got only 16, but that's not a big deal. I just added a couple of increases on each side of my first row so that I'd had 18 too. So don't sweat if you're going across here laying your foundation chain and you don't get 18 stitches. You can fix that with some simple math and some increases or decreases depending on your situation. Just make sure that first row has 18 as her pattern says. Now the reason why that is important is because you want it to be the same height and you want your decreases here to begin at the same time so that the shape is the same as Sarah's pattern. So that's an easy fix. Now I followed her cookie instructions exactly. Obviously I didn't have the same types of buttons that she had so I just winged it with what I did have. There's one thing that I did differently though, and that is that I doubled my cookie. You see, I made two of them, not just one circle, but two, and I chained them together. When I put the icing on, I just put them both together like that. 
this is why I did that. Let me tell you what I was thinking. First of all, mine's rarely going to get washed. It's just going to be hanging there for decoration. But if I do want to wash it, I'm afraid that it'll come out all limp and floppy. So remember that washing and drying yarn often softens it. Now this is acrylic. And I purposely wash and dry acrylic so that it will come out softer. So double layers will give it more body and, and I also thought it would make it look crisp like a cookie. Now in the instructions on the Repeat Crafter Me blog, Sarah does tell you, she warns you that when you put your face on, be sure you leave enough room so that you can button your button back here. And she didn't have any pictures, so I just wanted you to see what mine looked like so you can understand how I went about doing that. Double crochet does not require you to make a buttonhole because buttons will just easily fit right through the openings there, so that's easy. Now, all in all, I think it came out really, really cute. However, putting on that foundation chain was kind of a pain in the neck. So, I came up with this one. Ba -bom. I basically just created a loop, crocheted around it, and then this is a rectangle, and then I attached the stuff. It's the same principle, it's just not crocheting along the top of it. Let's look closer. Now don't laugh at me, but I thought I invented this. I was sitting in my chair and a light bulb came over me and I jumped up and ran to YouTube and no, I didn't. People smarter than me have already thought it up. Let me show you what it is. Basically, it's a circle with a rectangle. I'll put links to other tutorials that I found in the description box below because while I didn't use them, it, you'll get something similar, so mine may look different from what you see, but it's pretty much the same principle. Now, some people I've seen use a ponytail holder and they crocheted around it. That made it kind of stretch, but another person said that's a bad idea because what if the ponytail holder breaks and whatever. I did a chain and I crocheted around it and that was good enough for me. Now, I used, because I think that rectangles come out better on their sides when you use a smaller stitch, I just single crocheted this whole thing. And then I left a hole. I chained one, skipped a stitch, and then continued on. And that created the buttonhole for me. Single crochet is hard to have a buttonhole unless you use a T90 button. But I used Sarah, Repeat Crafter Me's, tutorial for the gingerbread and just kind of stuck it on there. So there you go. So either one you choose. They button very easily over the oven handle, the oven door handles to hang right, right there. So that's good. I just thought they were so cute. So I'll put all the links in the description box below and if you choose to do them, have fun. And if anybody's interested in embroidery machines, I highly recommend the Brother PE-800. It's wonderful. And as for cutting machines, I recently replaced my Silhouette Portrait Machine with the new Silhouette Cameo 4. And I bought both from Amazon. Links, of course, in the description box.